Hello. This is the second lesson in the second fetter about doubt. And in the last lesson, I talked about that whatever you have a feeling about doubt, um, there's always an underlying belief. So it is selfing around a belief and about uh, a belief. And in the last lesson, I also talked about that the antidote to doubt is calm. You need to calm down. You need to get into that space where you feel that you are calm and present in your body. I talked about finding into the joy of experiencing. Um, the joy of experiencing is, is present all the time. It's there all the time. It's not something that you can uh, tap into or lose. It's there all the time. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about uh, what a great place it is to be <laughs> when you feel doubt. Now, I know that that you might not see it like that right now but this lesson is gonna help you in seeing that doubt is a really really good place to be because since doubt is about an underlying belief and that underlying belief has a foundation in feelings and emotions that means that there's nothing you need to do it's not something which you which you need to think about and you need to uh, figure out and there and you need to um, look into uh, you don't need to do that because whenever we're working with feelings and emotions, the only thing you have to do is feel them. That's it. That's the solution. And that's why um, it's so important to find into the calm when you work with doubt. Because in the calm, you create the space where you have um, compassion and unconditional acceptance to whatever comes up. And you need that when you look into feelings and emotions. Because all you need to do with a feeling and emotion is just allow it to be there and feel it. So whenever you're in doubt, there's something underlying that you do not want to feel and you do not want to get in any contact with. That is why the mind jolts into into the doubt and prefer to have it, you know, in a very space from, <laughs> from the shoulders and up where it's just about thinking back and forth and juggling that back and forth. You're not going to find anything there. You need to come into the body and in the body, whenever you feel something, you will feel an area in your body that is contracting. And while that is happening, other areas are expanding because it is like that wave all the time. So it's very much about getting in contact with your body and, and feel what is happening. And the great thing about it, as I said, is you don't need to do anything. You do not need to do anything. All you have to do is feel it. Whatever emotion is there, just feel it. Whatever feeling is there, just feel it. You do not have to solve anything. You do not have to think about it, reflect about it. Not at all. Just feel it. Just create space for what is and feel it. And the weird thing about it is that because that was what was needed initially to begin with, when the, that foundational belief was created, you didn't create space to the feeling. You pushed the feeling down or pushed the emotion down. Let's say that you have an underlying feeling of not being good enough. You have an underlying feeling about low self-esteem or low self-worth. That is a very, very nasty and sticky and disgusting feeling. And you don't want that. And especially if it happened at a time in your life where you were young, so your brain wasn't fully developed and you you had no way of managing that that kind of issue on your own. You, you would need a parental guidance or you would need like somebody to help you and resolve it and, and to show you how to manage emotions when they're there. If you didn't have that, then what you did with that feeling was that you didn't know how what to do with it. So you just pushed it down. You diverted your attention into other areas. You, you started to do things that you knew how to manage. And then you did that instead. So what wasn't what, what didn't happen then was that there was no space for that feeling to be there. And that's what you need to do now. You only ever have doubt about an underlying belief that is always tied into a feeling or an emotion. And all you have to do is to create calm 
and space for that feeling and emotion to be felt. And then the doubt will dissolve itself. I also said that lots of time last time, that you cannot solve doubt. It's not possible. We really, really want to, because then, then we avoid feeling that sticky, disgusting, not very kind emotion or feeling that is there. But you cannot, you cannot solve it. It needs to be dissolved. And it only happens with you feeling the feeling or feeling the emotion, creating space for it to be there. And then it will dissolve itself. And it's safe to do so. You're not a child anymore. If you have an underlying feeling of, of you not being good enough or you not being worthy um, of love and attention and compassion and worthy of life or whatever it is, you can be with that feeling and that emotion and then look into, you know, is it true? Is this truth or is it just a feeling? And again, just like we talked about in the first letter when it was about the thoughts that come there, when you have that that identification with a thought, that you don't need to do anything about the thought. The thought is just there. Just like hearing is there, sound is there, smell is there, taste is there. You don't need to do anything about it. You don't need to do anything about the thought. It's just there. And it's the same with a feeling. A feeling is the same thing. There is, an, and when you are in doubt, there is an identification with a feeling or an identification with an emotion. So it's still first fetter stuff, you know. It's still about identifying. It's still about believing something to be true, which is not based in reality at all. So where we talked about in the last fetter, the identifying with the thought, in this fetter we're talking about the identifying with the emotion or identifying with the feeling. So it's still selfing. You're still selfing about it. And it's not real. It's just an emotion. And you don't need to do anything about it. The only thing you need to do, just like with a smell or something you see or a sound, the only thing you need to do is just allow it to be there. And that's what you that, that is what you do when you feel a feeling or you feel an emotion. So in this fetter, I'm going to convince you that anytime you have a doubt, it's great. It's great. It's an amazing space to be. Um, you would never ever become aware of these different facets of your emotional being if you did not have the doubt. So the doubt is great. And I also want to say to some people, doubt is not even an issue. You know, it completely falls away whenever they realize that the thought that they had about something and the identification they had with a thought, that is completely mind made. Then the doubt completely falls away and, and that's it. But for other people, they need to look into that emotional identification or the feeling identification um, and realize that that too is just completely made up. It's completely mind made. So in Buddhism, doubt is a huge thing. It's, it's a huge thing. It, it's, it's really talked about a lot. And it's talked about partly with the skeptical doubt, where it's doubt uh, in the teachings and doubt in the, in the suttas and doubt in the Dharma and, and doubt on that level. Um, and I talked about that in the, last, in the last lesson, that skeptical doubt is the doubt that we have because we have a belief about an external thing. It's still a belief. It's still a belief. It's still identification. Um, internal doubt is when we have doubt about ourselves, our self-worth, uh, self-esteem, uh, sense of self, um, doubt about boundaries. Uh, am I allowed to say no to this? You know, where, where we have that back and forth and, and do not know if it's a yes or no that we are sensing or feeling. And it happens because we're diverting our attention away from from what is actually, truly, really here, right now, and, and do not want that. We want something else. So it's still about the ego, the I am not, I should be. Something else than what is, is what I want. I don't want this. So in Buddhism, um, doubt is usually compared with if you have a water hole, and that water hole is muddy, that if, if you stir up the water, that you, you can't see clearly. 
you can't see clearly out from inside the, the, the water hole, inside the muddy water hole, and you can't see any reflection um, when you look into the water hole. So there's no light coming in. Very, very great metaphor. There's no light coming in and you cannot see out. You cannot have any insight. You cannot see anything with clarity because it's just muddy. What you need to do is leave it. And, and that's the difficult part when I say that the antidote to doubt is calm. You need to calm down. You need to leave it. You need to stop stirring up in it all the time, bringing it up all the time because it won't solve anything. Stirring up in everything all the time is not going to solve anything. You need to leave it. And in that lies a lot of trust. And trust is another another really, really big one. Um, when, when we get closer to the higher fetters, then you will then you will feel and see and hear um, and sense that trust is a big one. I don't mean faith, like in the religious sense of faith, you know, leaning back back and some someone or something has your back. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that completely clear knowing that you cannot control anything. Whenever we believe that we can control something, it is so delusional. You cannot control anything. We believe that, and the ego really, really wants to believe, that I have any kind of agency in what I'm doing. But the, the, the fact is that whatever is happening is happening on a much, much bigger scale than our little puny minds can fathom at all. Um, I had a really good conversation with uh, with Vince the other day in an, in an interview that you're going to watch at some point, um, where I asked him, so tell me about your awakening process. And he started to talk about when he was created in the womb and all the way back to the to the little grain of sand lying next to the dinosaur's foot. Because that is actually how it is. For you to sit and listen to this talk right now, just really reflect on how many things that needed to fall into place for that to happen, both in your life, but also in my life, for, for, for this actually to happen. Your parents that needed to meet, uh, you having clarity and going on YouTube exactly today and clicking on this video and making it this far into the video. Um, so many things need to happen for things to fall into place. And we're so delusional when we, when we actually believe that I control that. I was the agent of doing that. So delusional. You're not. You're not. Everything is happening on a much, much, much bigger scale than our puny minds can understand. And whenever you're tied into doubt, you you kind of have um, limited your world into believing that it all comes out, it all comes out to a right way or a wrong way. I can do this or I can do that. That is the most limit yeah I don't even I can't even find the words that is the most limited way of viewing this amazing unfolding of life that is happening and this amazing unfolding of life that is happening is way beyond a you and a me it's way 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 beyond that so we kind of like cling on to this delusional belief that there's only a right way or a wrong way we cling on to that delusion belief about um, my self-worth, my self-esteem, my being in the world, my boundaries, uh, my history, my memories, my, my childhood, my traumas, my all of that. We cling on to that because the scope of what we're actually talking about when we talk about non-self and we talk about non-identification and we talk about that there's no separate self. The scope of that is so big that we we can't even we can't even understand it, you know? We can't even understand it. And that is scary. And I think that's one of the reasons why for some of us we we latch on to that feeling of doubt. Because we don't dare to let go of the of the buoy. 
Um, yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, suspenders and belt <laughs> in life. Yeah. With, with an airbag around us, you know, um, because we believe that we are unsafe. We believe that we're unsafe. And it leads me back to, to, the, to the part about trust. Really trusting that it is okay that there is no separate self. It's okay. You're not dissolving anything. It, it's never been there to start with. To begin with, there, there's never been a self. Um, it's something that we, when we're children, that we, that we are taught that there is and it's very important i have to really emphasize that it's very important that that we are taught that there is a separate self and that there are boundaries and there is a this is my body and this is you there it it is important that 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 is part of our of our upbringing that we are taught about the ego because otherwise you can't dissolve it when we come a bit further um i'm going to talk about um it's also in this feta i'm going to talk about the 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 creation of the ego and why it is so important to have an ego to let go of uh, so if you have children do not teach them about non-self they need a strong solid ego strong solid boundaries for that to be let go in a healthy way so doubt is kind of like a a gateway where you get to to stop in your track and really ask the question what is this when you have the feeling of doubt, what is this? What What is this about? That feeling tone that I have, what is that actually about? What is the driving force behind that? Because that driving force is there and I'm not even aware of the driving force being there. So so what is this? What, what is this really, really about? It's not what I think it's about. This is just what I'm I'm comfortable to talk about. Oh, I'm really doubtful about if I should do this or that. That's only what you're comfortable to talk about. Underneath that, there's a, a, there's a driving force. There's a toxic starting point. There's, there's a deep-seated emotion um, tied into a belief that you do not want to look at. And so it's a great place to be, to really look into it and really, really ask, what is, what is this? And also knowing that it can't be truth. It can't be truth because it's just a feeling. It's just a feeling. It's just a sensation. It can't be truth. It is just a feeling or a sensation or an emotion happening that needs your awareness, the need for you to look at it. And also since, since it's just a feeling or a sensation, you don't need to do anything, as I said. It's just a feeling. It just needs to be felt. I'm just sitting and thinking that I think that, that one of the reasons that there's so much emphasis on doubt in the Buddhist text is that there's going to be so many experiences ahead of you during life and, and when you start to dissolve about doubt that you will not be able to move forward in if you have no trust in yourself, if you have no trust in the experiences, if you have no trust in, 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 in the senses. If, if you have no trust in that, then you will not be able to move forward. And like I talked about last time, um, doubt is like that this kind of paralysis that we're in where we, we, we can't move forward and we most definitely are not going back. So the trust that you need to develop is the trust in the experiences. It's the trust in yourself in the experience. And I don't mean like the me, myself, I self. I mean that that trust in the experience that is unfolding uh, last time when I talked about the joy of experiencing, in that joy of experiencing, there's no opinion about anything. Whatever is happening is completely fine. And in that, there's a lot of trust. There's a lot of trust and a lot of letting be, not trying to change or have an opinion or expectation about anything, but just letting it be as it is. So when you go into the joy of experiencing, you open up to the part of you that trust the experience, that trust the process. So it's very. I really want to emphasize, I'm not talking about God and I'm not talking about the universe or angels or anything like that at all. I'm talking about purely factual, allowing what is and having a joy in that experience of what is. I'm also thinking that um, 
when you think about it, uh, doubt is very much a diversion about what is going on. Let's say that that uh, you and I, we want to, you know, have a cozy afternoon. It's Sunday, we want to have a cozy afternoon, so let's do a jigsaw puzzle. And we start to do the jigsaw puzzle, put it out on the table, and then and then we find out that we're missing a piece. And the moment we start to look for that missing piece, and we're looking, you know, in cupboards and in drawers and, and everything, we, we're trying to find that missing piece. The moment we do that, we are removing ourselves from the prime direction, which was having a cozy Sunday afternoon. Because our awareness and our attention is is in what is missing. It's in something external which is missing for us to have a cozy Sunday afternoon. You see it? That it's, a, it's just a complete diversion. And doubt is like that. Doubt is just a diversion. It's, it's removing you from what actually is alive right now into something uh, fixable, graspable, um, never really being aware and awake in the moment and experiencing what is alive in the moment right now. It's really difficult to to talk about doubt and to 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 dissolve doubt when we talk about it because doubt is as I said it's it's a mental formation and it's information it's information that needs to be verified by you. And the complex part about working with mental formations is that not only do you have the mental formation, but the one creating the mental formation is a mental formation as well. And all that is diversions from the physical sensation of a feeling of an or of an emotion. So it turns into kind of like a koan, you know, who's observing the observer? which makes it very, very complicated to, to dissolve, even though it's not complicated at all. And another part that makes it complicated is that that gatekeeping that the mind is doing, it is a protection mechanism um, about a, a very, very early sensation that you had, a very early feeling that you had, um, that you are now trying to avoid feeling and avoid getting in contact with. So that that gatekeeping that is happening, you really need to have compassion towards that. That, that it, it, the doubt is trying to protect you. It's trying to make you safe in a world that you at some point perceived as being unsafe. So it's also, when you sense doubt, then really have compassion towards what is happening. Don't be like, oh, I want to find out and dissolve this doubt that I have. Don't, don't, don't be like that. Don't be like that. Really, really honestly connect with that compassion of a part of you that is protecting you. That's why you, that is why the doubt is happening. It's diverting your attention so you do not get in contact with that feeling, that emotion. Um, and it's truly what I'm, what I'm trying to let you know that it's fine. Whatever feeling or emotion you have, it's completely fine. You do not need to do anything. You only need to feel it. That's it. And as you probably know, I'm a huge fan of, uh, of Angelo Di Lulu. And in his book, um, it's, not, it's not when he's not talking about doubt, but he has a sentence that I'm really thinking a lot about every time I talk about, about trust, about trusting the process and trusting the body and trusting the signals and trusting uh, what is happening that kind of trust that is beyond you know religious faith and the sentence is it's where intention and surrender meet and i really really love that because it's it's so so relevant when we talk about about doubt in the last lesson i talked about that you have kind of like that crossroad that you have an underlying belief that is creating a physical sensation in your body and a physical emotion in your body that you do not want. You can do two things. Either you, you, either you go with doubt. That is like a, a, a dead end road. It's like a cul-de-sac. You, whenever you get into that, there's no way out. The only way out of, 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 of that dead end road is the same way back. So, so doubt is kind of like, you go in there and then you stay there um, and you can be there for, for ages. But 
in order for you to get out of the sensation of doubt, you need to go to take a step back. And that's back to the crossroad where you have the underlying belief and the underlying emotion where doubt is one direction. The other direction is with unconditional acceptance to what is, which means that you place yourself in a space where you accept to be in a body where you feel doubt. And then you pay attention to what you're feeling, literally feeling in your body. Where, where is my body contracting right now? What is happening with my breath when I think about this feeling that is connected with doubt? Um, what is happening in my, in my thoughts? Where am I in my thoughts? I'm not here for sure. Doubt is never in the present moment. Doubt is always in the future and in the past. So where am I in my thoughts? Am I going into the past and reflecting on things that used to happen and now I'm afraid that, it's going to re that history is going to repeat itself? Is, is, is that what is happening? Can I be in a body where I feel that, um, that contraction and that fearfulness and that guilt or that shame or that bottled up anger uh, that fear can i be in a body where where this is my emotional and physical experience right now remember you don't have to do anything the only thing you have to do is allow it and feel it so with the unconditional acceptance you open up to what is there right now what is in your experience right now and the second thing you do is with compassion you, you allow to, for it to be in your body and you have compassion with the body that feels like this right now, that is, has a very, you know, holding back the breath, uh, is super, super contracted in the entire body. You feel how all your muscles are tensing up. Um, your mind might be racing about, you know, fear, anger, sh guilt and shame. Um, and then with love, you just allow it to be there. And you meet it with love. It's okay to be fearful. It's okay to be contracted. It's okay to be nauseated. It's okay to jolt back and forth in my thought in the past and in the future. It's okay. It's okay. I love you. I love you. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. So you simply allow the feelings that were not allowed then. And you don't need to know where it originated from. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is how this experience is in you right now and how you meet this experience in you right now. It's the only thing that matters. And with that, you completely heal whatever was the underlying belief. And that's why you don't need to spend the next two decades in therapy to find out what the underlying belief is. It doesn't matter. In your body, you have a contracting a sensation, you have a, a, a very, very clear feeling or emotion about something. And, and for you just to allow it to be there and feel the feeling that is coming up, you are healing the past that needs to be healed. And that's why it's so, so beautiful, you know? And it's also where it doesn't matter what it's about, you know? Whatever is, is what it is. It's completely, completely fine. And with that, you are opening up to some of the higher fetters that is very much about allowing what is to be as it is, where you no longer have any hooks into reality being played out in a certain way. Whatever is alive in you right now is alive in you right now and it's okay it's okay and whatever is happening it's happening and it's okay which means that when we go further along in this process and you keep coming back to this allowing and compassionate and affectionate uh, loving kindness towards yourself and that unconditional acceptance to what is the more you practice that in having that you will feel that not only does it dissolve doubt in you it also creates a space where other people are allowed to be who they are because who are you to know what they need to do in their life who are you to know which path they need to take 
to attain their freedom. I mean, who knew that you were going to sit here, you know, on this beautiful day talking about doubt and allowing emotions. I mean, who knew? So allowing yourself space means that you also in return allow other people the same kind of space. They are allowed to be who they are. You have no no longer any need for anyone to change in any way because you are creating space for you, which means that you automatically can create space for them. And that then dissolves the next fetter that is further down the line where you even stop having preferences. You no longer have a preference about having doubt or not having doubt because you know the plethora of insights and gifts and um, um, overwhelmingly love and compassion that happens whenever you find anything that needs this kind of awareness. So instead of having a, a preference to life being, you know, smooth sailing, you're completely fine with it not being because, you know, every time it's not, every time you get a diagnosis or a divorce or you get fired or somebody cuts you off in traffic or do not return your lawnmower, whatever it is, you're completely fine with it. And I don't mean in the nihilistic, well, it doesn't matter. It's not, not like that. It's really with space and compassion and love to whatever is happening. And you know that whatever is happening, it's only bringing insights to you um, about so many things that you were not aware of before. And that is why doubt is amazing to look at and why doubt is so beautiful to work with. Because you're really, really expanding the sensation of love from being very, very limited to you and your pet. Then you are expanding it into being to whatever happens, whatever happens, you feel that sensation of love towards whatever it is. Yeah. I also want to say that an important part of this is obviously also that if you have trauma, uh, like I talked about in, in some lessons back, where I talk about ego death and talk about the, uh, all the childhood traumas that we have, you can probably see why this kind of, of emotion work is important to, to be with, with those traumas. Not to wish for them to go away, not to wish for the past to be any different than it was, but really, really embracing the trauma and the experience that the trauma shaped your personality with. Because when you really, truly embrace that, and you then are put in a position where you truly can see through self, truly can see that, okay, there is no I, then whatever experience you have had is expanding on the entire picture of being. So this is way beyond a separate self, um, way beyond the limiting belief about a trauma. Yeah. Th I feel I'm saying this in every single lesson, <laughs> but I can really, really honestly recommend you to find a guide or to be part of a group or to talk with your friends, friends that you love or colleagues that you love about working with the material here in the group. So you have somebody that you can uh, rely on and, and, and talk with about this because when you're locked into doubt we tend to be very narrow-minded about what is going on and you really need calm and consult you need to consult with somebody somebody that you that you can talk to that can go I, are you sure about that um, that can really turn turn the experience around because we tend to be locked into our mind into um, an emotion that if we have a feeling about shame, we're very, very locked into that feeling about shame. And it's the only thing we can see and think about. It's really lovely to have somebody that can tell you that, that that feeling of shame that you have, it's okay. You know, I can be in the world where you have that feeling of shame. I have no wish for you to be any different than who you are. You know, 
you do you. Whatever you feel is is you. Whatever happened that gave you that feeling of shame, it's okay. I'm still here. I still love you. You don't need to be any, any different. To hear that from another person and to have that mirror in another person is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And you can find that with a guide or with a with a good friend or in a group. Um, and I really can warmly recommend you to, to do that because doubt is a big one. It is a big one because it's so much about emotions. And, and also because you can have that you can have that sense of 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 uh, of pressure when you are in doubt. That sense of pressure that you need to do one or the other. That that you you can completely lock yourself into a very very fixed belief of of reality. And then it's really useful to have people around you that that you can um, reflect this with. That you can do a ping pong with about what is happening. Because then they can point out for you that that pressure that you just put on yourself is something that you just identify with. It's completely selfing. Um, and it's so valuable to have a friend that is going, come on, you're selfing. You know, it's really, really valuable. So make sure that you have a good guide or you have a group of friends or that you're in Vin's group um, and uh, and have, have those people to really support you when you're working with doubt. Another reason why it's very valuable to have uh, friends around you or have a group or have a guide it is that you need when you're in doubt you tend to compare and you need to have somebody that can really remind you that whatever experience you have it's valid whatever whatever is coming up in you whatever is alive in you it is valid. It doesn't need to change. You don't need to be any different than, than who you are and what you are experiencing. So comparing your experiences to someone, um, that is leading you away from the direct experience. But there is no wrong or right way. There's just experiences. And for you to have uh, a guide or a friend or somebody around you that can really remind you, hang on, hang on, what you're experiencing is valid. Whatever you believe is a doubt it, it feels like a doubt you know it, it is an emotion so so feel that emotion do not compare yourself with other people oh that person didn't have any doubt at all at any point mm, all that and having having um, a good friend or group with you that can remind you of that is so valuable it really really is so there are as many ways to liberation as there are people on the planet and if you lock yourself into uh, one teaching or one teacher or one solution or one one way to do it, you're limiting yourself. You're limiting yourself. It's so much more to never doubt your experiences. So the reason I really enjoy doing feather work and, and enjoy using the feathers as a model for, for, for awakening and as a model for, for insight is that nothing sneaks by you. You know, you're... You're so very much aware all the time. So for me, it really, it really, really works. You're constantly encouraged to question and to look into everything. So that was it. The takeaway from this lesson is to know that whatever doubt you're feeling, it's great. It's you having an emotional insight to what is happening in you. And the only thing you have to do about a feeling is feel it. You don't need to do anything. That is the takeaway from this lesson. And it's also really to remind yourself that being in doubt is a great place to be because you're really in a place where you're no longer fixated in your mind into what is right or wrong and, and into, into what is the way to do or not the way to do. You're As soon as you become aware of doubt, you are kind of like, stepping above that where you can connect with the emotion that is the underlying belief and then you dissolve doubt uh, with the calm so it's very much about connecting with your body um, and looking into the underlying emotion i think that was it thank you